1911, a group of people, immigrants from Europe, gathered here on the shores of East Falmouth and began to celebrate their lives and their faith. For 90 years, this people has joined together as a people of faith. When we were kids, we used to all play that little game with our hands. Here's the church, here's the steeple. Open the doors and see all the people. The history of a church is the history of its people, living out their lives, their dreams, in hope, in love, and in faith. The history of St. Anthony's Parish for these past 90 years is precisely that type of history, a history of a people struggling to survive, believing in God, listening to His Word, and sharing His life. It was the interior of the church. I thought it was very beautiful. It's the first church I'd ever seen. I still am thrilled when I see the crystal chandeliers. They're really lovely. And it's a pretty, it's a, to me, a jewel box of a little church. It's a very warm parish. It's a family parish. At the turn of the century, a heavy influx of Portuguese-speaking people came to Cape Cod. The settlers, a mix of immigrants, sailors, and workers on sailing ships, arrived from Portugal, the Azores, and Cape Verde Islands. They spread out in homes in Falmouth and its villages, many of them settling in East Falmouth. The Portuguese people were of strong Catholic faith and sought to worship in their new land. In Falmouth in the 19th century, there was only one Catholic church, St. Joseph's, which had been established in 1882 in Woods Hole. It served all the southern part of the Cape as far as Harwich, as well as the islands of Nantucket and Martha's Vineyard. Since this was an English-speaking parish, it was difficult for the newly arrived Portuguese to participate fully in the various church services and activities. Things I like about being a parishioner here is having that sense of community, knowing people that you see, seeing people around town that you also see, and that no matter what walk of life you walk, you all come to the same place at one point during the week. So you can all come together and put aside whatever it is you have, whatever stress, whatever trouble, whatever work that needs to be done, to all sit and worship together. So it just, that sense of unity amongst all, of all different ages and personalities is great to be a part of. In 1911, some of the Portuguese families established the Holy Ghost Association of East Falmouth, a lay group of Catholics formed to continue their cultural and religious practices. They congregated in the building on Brick Kiln Road, known as the St. Anthony's Hall, as well as the Fresh Pond Holy Ghost Hall. Some years later, this organization, along with other Portuguese descendants of the area, appealed to Bishop Daniel Fien of Fall River Diocese to send a priest to minister to them in their own language. In 1921, their prayers were answered when Reverend Antonio M. Fortunia came to East Falmouth and said Mass in Portuguese and heard confessions on a regular basis in St. Anthony's Hall. The Portuguese settlers had found a great opportunity on Cape Cod in farming such crops as cranberries, turnips, and strawberries. With an eye on building a new church, strawberry farmers had begun setting aside money from the sale of berries to support this endeavor. They once again appealed to the bishop, asking him to allow them to build their own church assuring him that they would be able to pay for this church through their farming profits. The bishop's consent was granted, and the 36-acre John Crocker estate was purchased for $5,000. Portuguese tradesmen donated their labor in their free time and worked tirelessly to build a church. They would work all day, these people, and then they would go there at night and Saturdays and Sundays and work on that building. There was no labor charged for the St. Anthony's Church. It was built completely and totally labor-free. They used their horses to dig the foundation, and the foundation was just under the altar. And go back to watch my father fixing the altar, repairing it and painting it. It was a true community effort. The church was open to the public on January 1st, 1924. With the creation of the new parish, Portuguese Catholics living across Cape Cod became communicants of St. Anthony's Parish. True to their word, 
the parishioners continue to set aside money to pay off the church debt. The strawberries, whatever amount of money they made on that day, yeah. it was for the church. Yeah. One Sunday of, of the summer, that they would, whatever crops they picked that day would go to, to St. Anthony's. St. Anthony's has been known ever since as the church built by strawberries. As a national church, St. Anthony's offered Mass in the Portuguese language. This tradition continued for more than 50 years. Father Teixeira was, uh, was, was the uh, pastor here, and he, uh, and the, the Mass was in Portuguese and Latin. Reverend Manuel J. Teixeira succeeded Father Fortuna in December of 1924. Father Teixeira had come to this country from the Azores after serving as a priest there for 10 years. Uh, he only talked Portuguese. Yeah. So we had to learn how to talk Portuguese, and we had to say our prayers in Portuguese. Families were grateful to have a neighborhood church. St. Anthony's connected all the various villages of East Falmouth, from Titica to Akoit. And I remember walking to church every Wednesday and Friday during Lent. And by the time that St. Anthony's was built, I didn't want to have to look at a car so we would go that way. Mm -hmm. Previous to that, we'd go to and Wagon. The church was the center of this new Portuguese settlement, where traditions from the old country were carried on. Portuguese feasts served to remind parishioners of their rich ancestry. We used to have feasts at that time. They called them feasts on Sundays. But I remember in August, every year, we'd have um, a three-day feast in August, fireworks. Everybody in the parish went. Of course, the, the children had to be in the procession, so we always had our white communion dresses if we still had them. Uh, each one had a chance of, uh, of getting the Holy Ghost, the, the crown. My father made an altar in the living room. Families would draw names to have the week of the, having the crown in their house and, and all that, and so, and then children in their family would, there'd be a ceremony every Sunday and they would go down, they would carry the girl would have the crown and the boy would have the sepulchre. The Reverend Jose Maria Betancourt A. Avila began his ministry as pastor of St. Anthony's in September of 1944. During his tenure, St. Anthony's Parish experienced its first major renovation. The most significant element of the renovation was the addition of the painting of Our Lady of Fatima to the sanctuary. Father Avila commissioned the Portuguese artist Enrique Medina to create this centerpiece of the altar. Mr. Medina explained that his work on this painting was a gift, a symbol of his devotion to the Virgin. The arrival of the painting and its installation were a highly anticipated event. The magnificent painting was unveiled in August of 1946. And they had a big sheet, and we'd go in there and lift the sheet to look at it. The Portuguese royal shield at the top of the frame in its integral part of the whole set serving as a reminder that Our Lady appeared in Portugal and that the, that the Virgin has been looked upon as patron of our country for over 300 years. It is said that Fulton Orsler, author of The Greatest Story Ever Told, once visited St. Anthony's and commented, this church and this painting should become a mecca for every tourist on Cape Cod. Other elements of the renovation were the installation of new pews of walnut stained birch, crystal chandeliers, and a hand-carved Italian wood station. In 1951, the sanctuary was remodeled and a new reredos was constructed where the paintings of Our Lady of Fatima was incorporated. The landscaping around the church and the rectory was completely redone and a parking lot for over 300 cars was paved. In May of 1964, Reverend Louise G. Mendonca was appointed pastor of St. Anthony's. During his pastorship, he succeeded in bringing back to the church parishioners who had become inactive. A side entrance for the parking lot from Acapesca Road was constructed and landscaped. The parish center was renovated to better accommodate the religious classes by dividing the basement area into classrooms and a large assembly room into smaller rooms with portable walls. He recruited a large staff of volunteers to teach. Over the years, the faith formation program that Father Mendonca inaugurated had continued and grown. In 1967, Reverend George Amaral was assigned pastor of St. Anthony's Church. 
He undertook a major building project to expand the seating capacity of the church considerably by adding two wings. At the same time, the basement of the church was made into a hall with a kitchen and a seating capacity of over 200. The newly expanded church required sundry religious accoutrements and furnishings. The double-hung frosted windows in the church were replaced with the present stained glass windows. Each of the windows was designed to represent symbolically an occupation or profession held by the people of the parish. The first occupation called for was strawberry growers. One to your right is people raising strawberries and then you follow it around. And then it shows how the families grew and they learned these different trades and went on. These windows bring such a unique quality to St. Anthony's, the way they represent the people of the parish. The Lamb of God window, which had adorned the Reredos before the Fatima painting, was moved to the east wing in recent years, adding another element of color and beauty to the church. Activities and traditions have abounded over the years, from feasts to children's events to movie nights for kids. Movies and whist parties, and they had, would have the, uh, always something going on to have movies every Sunday. It was 10 cents to go there. In 1969, Father Emeril on the Council of Catholic Women organized a two-day summer fair, which was a revival of the original bazaar started by Father Texera. This country fair eventually evolved into the more recent summer fair, which proved to be a significant fundraiser for the parish. Around this time, a bingo activity was established to help raise funds as well. Central to many of these events was the serving of traditional Portuguese food, such as cachoeira, malasadas, kale soup, and jag. Other male traditions, like bean suppers, were an integral part of the parish and helped to raise funds to support programs. In 1977, Monsignor Maurice Souza was assigned to St. Anthony's Parish, returning to the parish he had served from 1939 to 1943. It was at this time that parish boundaries in Falmouth were redrawn and the designation of St. Anthony's as a Portuguese national parish was discontinued. Instead, St. Anthony's became a territorial parish designed to serve those within a central area of East Falmouth. Parishioners of all ethnic nationalities were then welcomed at St. Anthony's. One of Monsignor Souza's main accomplishments was the expansion of St. Anthony's Cemetery at the rear of the church property. The cemetery had been started in 1923, the same year the church was dedicated. My dad and my uncles and all of these people from around, they would uh, clear the land, help to clear the land mm -hmm. for the cemetery as it was needed. In June of 1986, Reverend Leonard M. Mullaney was assigned to St. Anthony's Parish. Under Father Mullaney's direction, several projects were undertaken to improve the property. The entrance driveway was widened, the church roof was reshingled, and a handicap entrance was provided near the front of the church. A new bell steeple was constructed and placed atop the church. In 1992, the interior and exterior of the church were painted and renovations were made in the sanctuary and a new baptismal font was donated. In 1993, renovations and improvements were made to our parish center to provide more classrooms for our growing number of students. Also, the woods surrounding the church property were cleared to give a park-like appearance. Parish volunteers were at the heart of all these projects. Since the church's inception, the old Crocker homestead has served as the priest's residence. In the late 80s, it was determined that it was time for a new rectory. After extensive planning, construction was started in June of 1990 and the new rectory, which housed offices and a resident, was blessed by Bishop Cronin in February of 1991. In 1999, St. Anthony's held a celebration to commemorate its 75th anniversary. The parish enjoyed a parade and reception, mass, and a silver tea prepared by parishioners. Not long after the celebration, in July of 1999, St. Anthony's welcomed Father William Costello as the new pastor. During his time as pastor, we have seen St. Anthony's membership grow to more than 1,800 year-round families from not only East Falmouth, but all over the Upper Cape. Our summer visitors add another several hundred families annually. People come to our church because they find it to be a welcoming community and our masses a faith-filled experience. Today's parishioners, 
as those of old, are incredibly generous with their time, treasures, talents, and prayers, heeding the gospel call to help those in need, both locally and globally. We have continued traditions from the past and have developed new programming so that young and old can feel a part of this vibrant community. Our faith formation and confirmation programs serve nearly 400 young people. Our ministries have continued to thrive and grow as service to God and to others remain a, a top priority for the good people of St. Anthony's. What I love about St. Anthony's is that every time you walk in, there's not some person looking down upon you and saying that you shouldn't be here because you're a child and you're gonna be loud and everyone's gonna look at you funny. You're there because everyone's just there. It's just a part of your life. No one looks at you differently. Since 1924, there have been eight pastors, 15 parochial vicars of St. Anthony's Church. Although certainly priests have an impact on every parish, what has always brought about the consistent growth of St. Anthony is the people and their own spirit. The history of St. Anthony's is a history of its people, priests and parishioners, who have worked together to build a parish with a vision toward the future. It is a history of a deep faith, a love for the Lord, and the need to keep family and friends together to give greater honor and glory to God. The history of every parish is the history of its people. We have listened to the voices of 12 of those people sharing their story. Their voices speak for the thousands of other voices of parishioners in the past 90 years. There's an old story that I often like to share about the early days of the church when an invading king demanded from a priest in Rome the wealth of the parish. The priest assured the king that it would take him a couple of days to collect all of the wealth. A few days later, the king entered into the church expecting to see gold and silver and jewelry and coins. But what he saw was farmer and fishermen, carpenters and masons, men, women, children. And the priest said, this is the wealth of the church. Madeline McKenna described St. Anthony's as a jewel box of a church. Her observation is so true. As the wealth of St. Anthony's is its rich diversity and its unity of love and faith, a living history is like a rainbow. It spans a continuous spectrum of colors. It is difficult to find its beginning or its end, but the middle is the glorious lives of a people responding to the promise of our God.